Hey there and welcome back to Mass Effect 2. My name is Pete and today we complete what we started in the last episode. We have ventured deep into a Blue Sun's mercenary base, we have fought off wave after wave of them, all of that in the attempt to reach the Krogan Dr. Okir, who appears to be rapidly breeding more of his kind, and who for some reason has unleashed his Krogan horns onto the mercenaries. In the last episode we successfully made our way over to the lab where Okir resides, but before we could enter we met a familiar face. I shut down the security cams as soon as I saw it was you. Never thought I'd say it, but I'm glad it's you shooting up the place. Sorry, Ranathanoptis. You let me go when you destroyed Saren's lab on Vermeer. Had to outrun a nuke in a utility pod, but it's still a second chance. Now once again, quick refresher, we know her back from Mass Effect 1, where she helped out Saren in a project that also had to do with Krogan. And while that might be the reason she's here, let's still ask her why, because that also gives us two Paragon points. I assume you have a good reason for being at this lab. Don't worry, I'm not wasting the chance you gave me. My work here, strictly beneficial. Not for the mercs. Jador's on a standard power trip. But Okir is trying to do something good, even if his methods are a little extreme. Everyone deserves a second chance, right? And sometimes giving one pays off. I take care of my debts. Now, regarding Okia's work, for the moment we only know that he's breeding Krogan for the Blue Suns to use as mercenaries. However, at least so far, the newly bred Krogan don't seem to meet expectations, neither those of the Blue Suns nor those of Okia himself. However, that does not really explain why there is such a big conflict between the Blue Suns and Okia, so it might be smart to ask what Okia is really doing here. What's Okia trying to do here? It's complicated. Jador wants a private army, but Okia mostly ignores her. He's running the project for his own reasons. I created a mental imprint routine to educate his tank bread. Most don't get through it. He dumps them for some reason. He wants to help his people, but he's not looking for a genophage cure and he's not going for numbers. That's all I know. Right now, that is actually already all we can get out of her. Still, we can send her off and acquire two more Paragon points, so let's do exactly that. Finding you in a place like this makes me think letting you go was a mistake. You don't want that. We agree on that. Don't worry, I plan on staying as far away from anything to do with you as possible. Now if you don't mind, I'm gonna run like hell before you blow the place or something. I know how you work. I'm all for second chances, not so sure on third ones. Right, four Paragon points earned and there are a few more things in the room that we can interact with. So before we enter the lab, there is a secure terminal to hack. That one gives us 4,000 credits, then we also have a medical station on the wall. And now, we're ready to meet the man we're here for. Here you are. I've watched your progress. It's about time. The batteries on these tanks will not wait while you play with these idiotic mercs. Now, even without subtitles, it should be pretty obvious that this is in fact Dr. Akir. Still, it can't help to double check, especially not if two Paragon points wait as the reward. I take it you're Akir? You don't seem particularly caged, or grateful that I'm here. You may claim to be here to help, but the formerly deceased Shepherd is not a sign of gentle change. Surprised? Old Krogan should know you. I'm sure Rana has already revisited your actions on Vermeer. And we are now once again reminded of our actions on Vermeer, where Saren himself was working on a genophage cure, but in our efforts to hunt him down, that cure got destroyed and, well, we played a pretty significant role in that. I'm sure you're eager to retell the story. Such a tale. Saren, the Spectre Traitor, threatens the return of the Krogan Horde by curing the genophage, undoing the gentle genocide of the Turians and Salarians. But... Before Saren can deliver his endless troops, in rides Shepard, securing victory through nuclear fire. I like that part. It has weight. And no, the decisions we made on Vermeer were not made lightly, and pointing that out will give us an additional two Paragon points. I didn't have a lot of room for finesse. If there'd been any other solution, I'd have considered it. But I approve. Saren's pale horde were not true Krogan. Numbers alone are nothing. The mistake of an outsider. One that these mercenaries have also made. I gave their leader my rejects for her army. But she grows impatient. It's time for you to take me out of here. We're here about the Collectors. We couldn't care less about your problems. I see. Yes. Collector attacks have increased. A human concern. 
My requests were focused elsewhere. I acquired the knowledge to create one pure soldier. With that, I will inflict upon the Genophage the greatest insult an enemy can suffer. To be ignored. So, time to ask a few questions now, and I think the most pressing issue is the sheer number of Krogan that seem to have gone wasted. Okia calls them rejects, the mercenaries call them insane and mindless, but the one Krogan we talked to seemed perfectly fine, yet it seems like they were not what Okia had in mind. Your search for the perfect soldier created a lot of failures. You don't care about them? I failed no one. My rejects are exactly what Jador asked for. She simply lacks the ability to command. They are strong, healthy, and useless to me. I need perfection. If a few thousand are rejected, so be it. My work will purify the Krogan. We will not be restored. We will be renewed. And this one's interesting, because up until this point it was easy to assume that Okia was not only looking for quality, but also for quantity, yet it seems like this one perfect breed, as he calls it, is indeed enough for him. I thought the Krogan ideal was a return to the numbers that threatened the galaxy. We will not need numbers. My soldier is a template. It is a greater threat than all the phantom siblings that would have been at its flank. The galaxy still bears the scars of the Horde, but it will learn to fear the lands. And yes, there is no way around it. Okia's methods are insanely cruel, and his willingness to sacrifice hundreds if not thousands of Krogan who are, as he says, strong and healthy, I think that is more than enough reason for concern. You're just as cruel and manipulative as those who released the genophage on your people. Perhaps. But I will restore the Krogan, and my soldier will not provoke a nuclear response as a cure or horde would. My legacy is perfection, with each pure Krogan reaching higher by standing on our dead. They will exceed, but not forget. Now, up until this point, we also assumed that the Genophage played some kind of role in Okia's plans, but Okia himself does not really seem concerned with that, as his efforts seem to be purely focused on creating the perfect soldier. So you don't want to cure the Genophage? Contrary to what survivors claim, the Genophage does not produce strong Krogan. The only quality it filters is the ability to survive the Genophage. For every thousand stillborn, too many weaklings live. Every survivor is branded as precious. That's produced more cuddling than your collective human teats. I say, let us carry the Genophage. Let a thousand die in a clutch. We will defeat it by climbing atop our dead. That is the Krogan way. Now, one key information that we already had about Okia prior to this mission was that he has had some form of contact with the Collectors. And while we don't know exactly what the two sides exchanged, it seems pretty obvious that it had something to do with Okia's prototype here. What did you get from the Collectors? I need whatever you know about them. They are strange. So isolated, yet very available when your sacrifice is big enough. I gave them many Krogan. I may have information for you, but the tech was consumed in my prototype after I determined how to use it without killing the subjects. The deaths were unfortunate, but I only need one success to start the process. Right, now let's get to the point of all this. Despite his cruel methods, we came here to recruit the man, and it seems like he has achieved all he wanted, so let's earn ourselves two more Paragon points and ask him to join us. Your methods are extreme, but you know how to deconstruct a threat. Will you help us? Perhaps I can strike a deal to secure passage. But my prototype is not negotiable. It is the key to my legacy. Attention, I have traced the Krogan release. Oh, here, of course. I'm calling blank slate on this project. Gas these commandos and start over from Okir's data. Flush the tanks. She's that weak will. She'll kill my legacy with a damn valve. Shepard, you want information on the Collectors? Stop her. She'll try to access contaminants in the storage bay. Right, two more Paragon points can be had here. After all, considering Okia's fairly low levels of attachment to the product of his work, it's interesting that this one Krogan seems to worry him quite a bit. You can just start over like she plans to. What's the big deal? This tank is pure. It involved as much trial as data. Starting over will not duplicate it. It must survive. 
Jador will be with the rejected techs. Kill her. I will stay and do what must be done. Right, here we are, ready for the final firefight of this mission. I think it's pretty obvious what comes next. We are going to fight Jador, while Oki himself will do his best to protect his precious creation. Before we leave, though, let's bypass the terminal here for one very important research upgrade. This looks interesting. And then head through the door, down the stairs, and towards our boss fight. By the way, I highly recommend you drop a save here. This fight can kill you extremely quickly, even if you just misjudge a few angles, so be prepared for several attempts. Now for me, the door here was bugged and needed two attempts to be opened, but once we're inside of the room, we immediately want to head for cover. And that goes not only for Shepard, but for the entire squad, because in the following fight we can use every last ability. Now, two of the best spots to use for cover are these two crates next to the Krogan tanks. As you can see, we are under fire from a heavy mech, and no matter how well you're protected, that thing will tear you to shreds in just a few seconds. Despite all that, it should not be the primary focus of this fight, at least not in the beginning. Both the mech and Jador remain fairly stationary throughout the fight. The opposite is true, however, for a total of four Krogan who will spawn one after the other. As we all know, Krogan like to get up close and personal, but we can actually use that to our advantage and let them come to us. The biggest challenge then remains to stay in cover while we take them out, and especially your squad members will probably give you a hard time with this, because like I said earlier, angles and lines of fire play a huge role in this fight, and having a squad member just a few inches from where they're supposed to be can be the difference between life and death. Now, of course, it would be all too easy if the four Krogan would always approach from the same side, and indeed, number three here would have been able to flank us pretty easily if we hadn't moved to a different spot. It is up to you if you want to take your squad members with you, because every time they move, that creates an opening, and if they take too long, get stuck or move to the wrong side of cover, that can easily be the end for them. In this fight, we can also once again see the immense value of the concussive shot ability, because once the Krogan's armor is down, they are as good as dead, and that is in large part due to the fact that we can knock them down. Now, the fourth Krogan once again approaches from the wrong side here, so once again, let's move to the opposite side to create a bit of distance, which should then allow us to take out this last Krogan enemy without much trouble. Right, four Krogan down, and that leaves us only with two more enemies, but those two both pack a punch. Up next, we shift our focus on Jador herself. Going after the mech is also a viable strategy at this point, especially since that is the enemy that also poses much more of a danger to your squad members. But I found Jador a little easier to take out, and as cruel as it might be, leaving your squad members over on one side while you go over to the other to take care of her, that should more often than not keep the mech busy and allow you, and preferably your trusty sniper rifle, enough breathing room to finish the job. Just like many Blue Suns enemies before her, Jador also seems to favor the rocket launcher, so our windows to fire and deal damage are pretty limited, which is why I think a sniper rifle to the head is a very good solution. If you have heavy weapon ammo to spare yourself, you might also go with that, but keep in mind there is still a mech to take care of, and as you can see in my case, your luck with the squad members might run out at some point, so you might want to save some of that heavy weapon ammo, especially since Jador does not require an overly aggressive approach. Remaining cool, calm, collected, and most importantly in cover, that should normally be enough to get rid of her without taking too much damage yourself. So it is now down to us and the mech, and Garrus has already done a fair bit of damage. Unfortunately though, Miranda is down and we don't have her overload to take care of the shields quicker. As usual, cover and a slow approach are your best friends in this fight, but you might also run out of ammo at some point in this fight, especially if you're not using the soldier class and are a bit more limited in your weapon choices. At this point, the fight becomes more or less a war of attrition. Keep an eye out for when the mech launches a rocket, because that can hurt you pretty badly. But apart from that, just stay in cover and keep firing until the mech drops dead. And if you want to finish the combat off in style, then make sure to go for the head, but also stay in cover afterwards.
Why would someone so fanatical sacrifice himself for one Krogan? No telling what Oak here jammed into this thing's head. Releasing it may not be wise. Right, here we stand now with the fruits of Akir's work, and I would agree that Krogan does indeed seem very hard to pass up, so let's earn ourselves two more Paragon points and take him with us. A pure Krogan could pack a hell of a punch. We can always use another heavy hitter. If he'll help. I doubt anyone's asked for his opinion. Normandy, Okir is a no-go, but we have a package that needs retrieval. And he's a big one. All right, here we are, mission completed, and we have once again gained enough experience points to level up. The summary then describes the mission as not overly successful. The man we came for died and his legacy is very much a big, big question mark. But interestingly enough, the elusive man also gives us some leeway here to decide what we'll do with Okia's perfect soldier. In regards to that soldier, this upgrade here should come in handy. A big 25% health boost to all Krogan squad members is certainly useful. And the same is true for the second upgrade here, a 20% damage upgrade for the sniper rifle. Credits-wise, we didn't miss out on anything and obtained the maximum total of 40,000, and we also found and recovered the only platinum container in the mission. And with that, we can close the report and return to the Normandy. Yeah, you've said that a few times now. A normal Krogan is dangerous. This one was created and likely educated by a madman. So, the Krogan on board of the Normandy is still inside of his tank, and Miranda and Jacob are now arguing about whether or not it's a good idea to release him. For the moment, though, we can calm everyone down and get ourselves to Paragon points in the process. There's no way he's getting out unless one of us lets him out. Or unless Okir installed some sort of failsafe. Or a malfunction causes the tank to shut down. Now, instead of immediately going for the Paragon option again, we'll choose a different one this time, because we potentially have a few failsafes of our own. Edie. How quickly can the cargo hold be vented to space if there's an issue? 28 seconds, Shepard. And if anyone else is in the hold at the time? And now we have the choice between Paragon and Renegade, and as usual, we'll go Paragon and simply be careful. I'm not saying we take a crowbar to it right now, but I'm not giving up a potential resource. It's your decision, Commander. Just be careful. Noted. The cargo hold is safe enough while I decide what to do with them. Alright, here we are with the mission technically completed. However, as you can see on the right, we still need to make a decision regarding the Krogan we took with us. We also obtained 4 Paragon points from this conversation and 5 Paragon and 5 Renegade points for completing the mission. And up next, before we pay a visit to the Krogan, let's do some research. We received two upgrades in the mission that we just completed. The first is a 20% damage upgrade for the sniper rifle. And since we have more than enough platinum to afford it, we will apply it immediately. This upgrade has now also unlocked the armor piercing upgrade for the sniper, which gives us a 50% damage increase against armor, and is a very useful and for us also a very affordable upgrade this early in the game. One more than remains is on the prototypes we can find the Krogan Vitality upgrade, and even though we don't have a Krogan squad member just yet, that might change soon, so let's get the upgrade while we're here, after all, it's fairly cheap. And since our squad members don't have anything new to say to us at this point, I think there is only one thing we can do really, and that is to head down to engineering and see what we can do with the Krogan. And I don't think I'm spoiling anything when I tell you that we are indeed going to open up the pod, considering the combat potential of the creature inside it would be stupid not to, and it would also lock us out of not one but two achievements, so for the completionist in me, there is really only one choice we can make here. The subject is stable, Shepard. Integration with onboard systems was seamless. Before we do anything, though, we can ask Edie a few questions here, and it would indeed be interesting to know whether or not our friend here is aware of his surroundings. Can he see anything in there? Does he know where he is? Unlikely. Current neural patterns indicate minimal cognition. Barring shipwide power loss, the nutrients in the tank could sustain him for over a year. Before we open the pod, it might also be useful to know whether or not there's anything unusual going on. After all, there was collector technology involved in breeding this Krogan. What can you tell me about this guy? Anything unusual? The subject is an exceptional example of the Krogan species, with fully formed primary, secondary, and tertiary organs where applicable. No defects of any kind, aside from the genetic markers of the genophage present in all Krogan. I cannot judge mental functioning. And last but not least, the question that I almost find comical at this point, because a Krogan who was specifically bred to be the strongest fighter possible, yeah, that guy is probably going to be just a tiny bit dangerous. Any idea how dangerous this guy is? He is a Krogan, Shepard. 
If you are asking whether he is actively hostile, I don't have the necessary data to answer. Okir's technology could impart data, not methods of thinking. The subject may know of his views, but would not necessarily share them. Okay, and now we have the decision to make, and like I said, it's an easy one for me. We will open the pod now and live with the consequences. Stand by. I'm gonna open the tank and let him out. Cerberus protocol is very clear regarding untested alien technology. Now, Edie objects, and with good reason, I'd say. However, I also feel that Shepard doesn't really feel subject to Cerberus protocol, so we will insist, but politely, and get ourselves two more Paragon points. He's either a powerful addition to the crew or a time bomb. I'd rather deal with it now. Very well, Shepard. The controls are online. The switch and consequences are yours. Right, I would say we are in a bit of a tough spot here, but conversation-wise we don't really have any other options but to remain calm, and so we might as well get ourselves two more Paragon points in the process. I'm Commander Shepard and I don't take threats lightly. I suggest you relax. Not your name. Mine. I'm trained. I know things. But the tank, Okir couldn't implant connection. His words are hollow. Warlord, legacy, grunt. Grunt. Grunt was among the last. It has no meaning. It'll do. I am Grunt. If you are worthy of your command, prove your strength and try to destroy me. Now Grunt immediately starts off his young life by offering a challenge. However, we will completely ignore that for the moment and instead ask him why he didn't choose a more meaningful name. You wouldn't prefer Okir or Legacy? It's short. Matches the training in my blood. The other words are big things I don't feel. Maybe they fit your mouth better. I feel nothing for Okir's clan or his enemies. I'll do what I'm bred to do. Fight and determine the strongest. But his imprint has failed. Without a reason that's mine, one fight is as good as any other. Might as well start with you. Right, now regarding the recruitment of Grunt, we have several options here, but at least for the moment we're not going to choose any of them. Instead, we'll ask one more question about his somewhat surprising indifference towards the man who created him. Is it that easy for Okir's perfect Krogan to abandon his mission? Okir is just a voice in the tank. If his imprints are true, then he created something stronger than him. So he's not worthy of me. And if his hatreds aren't strong enough to compel me, they've failed too. I feel nothing. I have no connection. Right, here we are now, and the only options to recruit him without things escalating are of course the charm and intimidate options on the left. The options on the right would work as well, eventually, but I feel like Shepard's role as the strong, charismatic leader really shines if we stick to the left, so let's go with charming and get ourselves the final five Paragon points of this conversation. I have a good ship and a strong crew, a strong clan. You'd make it stronger. If you're weak and choose weak enemies, I'll have to kill you. Our enemies are worthy. No doubt about that. Hmm. Hmm. That's acceptable. I'll fight for you. I'm glad you saw reason. Huh? Uh, offer one hand but arm the other. Why, Shepard? If I find a clan, if I find what I, I want, I will be honored to eventually pit them against you. And here we are, with a total of 9 Paragon points earned, Grunt successfully recruited and the Krogan achievement unlocked. We could now talk to him again immediately, but he doesn't have that much to say at this point, so instead we'll simply head over to the other side of the ship and get a few more lines from Zaid. This mission takes me back. Get a knife stuck in the right way and you can pull that plate right off a Krogan's head. It's the best way to get a Krogan to talk. The threat of it drives them mad. 
Me and a buddy were hired to take out this one guy, Matthias, I think. Hell, I forget. Turns out it was a trap. We got jumped by a hit squad. Two Batarians, a Krogan, and a Hanna. Damn jellyfish nearly choked me to death. Wore a neck brace for weeks to cover that up. Haven't underestimated a Hanna since. Right, what's a good Mass Effect 2 video without a few combat stories from Zaid? But believe it or not, despite just completing a major plot mission, that is the only squad member who will give us anything new at this point, so we can now head back up to the bridge and talk about how things will continue from here on out. Commander, you've received a new message at your private terminal. Well then, let's have a look at who contacted us. And up first, we have a message from the Elusive Man. And this one's actually surprisingly polite, as the Elusive Man admits that we have free reign on this operation, so us going against Cerberus Protocol does not seem to bother him too much. Still, he also shows parts of his more ruthless side, telling us to not lose the body should Grunt die, because it might reveal valuable information regarding the Collectors. The second message here is entirely empty and I have no idea why it's here in the first place, so let's move on with number three and that one already reveals what we'll be doing in the next episode. Because sneaky as I am, I have installed another DLC and now the master thief Kasumi Goto is waiting for us on the Citadel. She is known to be stealthy and doesn't show herself much, but the elusive man was able to secure her services for us and who would we be to reject the help? So in the next episode, we will travel to the Citadel. As you might remember, Captain Anderson contacted us a while back as well, so we now have several reasons to go there. On top of that, continuing straight with the next recruiting mission is out of the question for me, because that would bring us to the first soft point of no return in this game, a point where we have no other choice but to continue with one very specific mission, and I would like to delay that for a while longer, just so we can gain one or two more levels and a bit more useful equipment, and also to avoid clogging up the middle part of the series with side mission after side mission after side mission. So, Citadel up next and I already have a plan what comes after that, but I will not reveal that for now. Instead, we can make the cut right here and wrap the episode up. As always, I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, then I would be happy if you could leave a thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel further, then you can of course either subscribe if you haven't already or support the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.